I am back from the Paul Bunyan Show down in Cambridge, Ohio. Man, what a weekend, what a few days leading up to the weekend. I had predicted last week that this show this year was gonna be the best ever, and it definitely was. It lived up to all the hype, all the expectations, everything. But I'm gonna be unpacking that, now that I'm unpacked back home, I'm gonna be unpacking all the stuff that uh, we did at the Paul Bunyan Show and leading up to the show in some upcoming videos. Right now, I got back home and the list of things to do is long. And the number one thing at the top of the list is right over here. Get the outdoor wood boiler fired up. And then I've got the roadside stands completely empty. I'm all out of bundles, there's everything. You come back from a little break, a little vacation, and the to-do list has piled up. So starting up the outdoor wood boiler is a pretty simple process. This is a Woodmaster 4400. Um, I've done videos in the past and I always leave things out or I kind of simplify things, but it is a real simple process. Uh, I'll go over it, describe it as best I can. Um, I'm sure there'll be questions, so I'll try to answer those either in the comments, on the live stream, or in an upcoming video. Uh, for right now, I'm gonna just quick show you uh, the few things you have to do to get ready to start this up. So I went ahead and did the few things that need to be done before firing this thing up. I checked those boxes off. Number one, remove the cap on the chimney if you put one on, which you should have on uh, during the summer to prevent any rain from going down your stack. So I did that. And then the other thing that I did is I topped off the water. So this little, uh, take that little cap off. I ran water in there. You can see it's kind of wet. You are gonna see, once the fire gets going, once that water heats up, it is going to expand and it's gonna cause some of that water to uh, flow out that cap. Take off the back panel here, um, and the first thing to do is then, once all those things are done, I just flip that switch, and you might not be able to hear it, but that starts the pump. Starts circulating the water. And then we can see right here that the temperature of the water is 52 degrees. This green light, uh, if this green light is ever out, it means that the water supply is low and you need to add water. So green light is on, that's good. Um, we're gonna turn on our fan and get that ready. As soon as we light a little fire in there, we'll hit this reset button and that'll turn on the blower. I also went ahead and built myself a little fire uh, to get things going. So right now, we can light that up. Uh, give it a chance to burn a little bit. I'll, I've got a bunch of kindling um, over here in my handy dandy Ultratech trailer. Got some scraps in here and just, just some wood to get the fire going. Now people are gonna ask about all this creosote on the side here and there's nothing uh, wrong with that. It's just, that's just the way it is. You end up getting uh, creosote built up on your sides with a system like this, just the way it operates. So there's no concern in having all that on there. If you were to clean it all off, you're just gonna have more on eventually anyway. All right, we'll give that a chance to get going. All right, we got a little fire going in there now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit this button and that is gonna turn on the blower. You can hear that kick in. So now what's happening is it's forcing air in across that fire, which should make it burn a little better and burn a little hotter. We can go out here quick and check. Here we go, we've got smoke coming out of the stack. So how this works, what we have going on here, is there's two set points. This is set at 170 as the shut off and 160 as the turn on. 
So when the water temperature, right now we're, we gotta heat this up to 170 degrees. Once that water temperature hits 170, the blower will shut off and as heat is pulled off of the water through the exchangers in the house, the water temperature will drop to 160 and at 160, the blower will turn back on. The water that is inside the water jacket and the lines continuously circulates um, whenever this thing is running. So the only thing that shuts on and off is the blower uh, that forces air into the fire and gets it burning again to then heat up the water. Once the water cools down, once heat is pulled off of the water through the exchanges in the house, the blower kicks back on like I mentioned earlier. So the water is continuously moving through this loop. So now you're gonna wonder what happens if like the power ever goes out or if the fire ever goes out. If the fire does go out, if we're gone for a couple days and the fire goes out, uh, then our natural gas furnace will kick on at a certain set temperature in the house. And then that in a sense will kind of back heat the water. So as long as the power is on, the, the pump will keep circulating the water. If the power goes out, then you may have a problem. <laughs> but we've never had that happen in uh, 10 plus years. Knock on wood. Things are burning pretty good. Looking good. We have come up to 62. We have raised the temperature 10 degrees. And you can see the water when it warms up, it does spill out the top just a little bit. So on the back side of the boiler, we have the supply line right there, the red, and then the return line, the blue. And those two lines, they're inside in case in that uh, insulated pipe, there's a bunch of insulation wrapped around in there, and that goes down about five feet into the ground. So that tubing runs under the ground all the way from the shed over to right here where it goes into the house. So here we are now inside the house and there is the red supply line and the blue return line. And they run over to the first stop is the hot water heater. So when the hot water comes in from the boiler into the house, the first stop is right here in this little exchanger. And what this does is this preheats the water go inside of the water heater. So what happens is the hot water is coming in. It doesn't mix with the water. It just transfers the heat through this exchanger to the water, preheating it into the water tank here. So that's where the first stop is right here in this first exchanger. And again, that just preheats the water into the water tank here and it so you can think of it as this water coming in is anywhere between 160 and 170, preheats the water up. When the boiler is running, the water heater here never runs. It doesn't have to run all winter long. So then from this, this exchanger, it goes out and it goes up and heads over to the forced air furnace right here in this exchanger. So we got the hot water coming in, goes through all these tubes in the exchanger. As air is being forced up across this exchanger, it pulls the heat off of the water and delivers it into the house. So we do have two thermostats inside the house. This is for the natural gas. That's the one that's been running. You can see that the temperature is actually 72 in the house right now. But when I turn this on, that turns on the thermostat that controls, uh, or is run off of the boiler and the water. So we have it set at 74. So now the 
furnace will kick in and just blow air across that exchanger downstairs until the temperature reaches 74 and then it will shut off. And then the natural gas is set so that if this temperature drops and this temperature drops to, I believe it's 68, then the natural gas furnace will kick on. So there we go. We're gonna heat things up in here to 74 and then that will shut off the forced air furnace. And we leave this at, uh, set at 74 all day, all night, all winter long. 99 degrees, we are at 99, almost to the triple digits. There it is, 100 degrees. So now for the next eight months, this fire will keep burning and it will keep that water temperature between 160 and 170. Now, as the water drops and the blower is not running, yes, the fire inside there is slowly burning. It's kind of smoldering, if you will, and that's where you get a lot of that creosote from is because the fire inside there basically gets suffocated out. It, it, the air is cut off. So you are gonna have that slow burning uh, fire that's just smolders and so you will end up with like some creosote built up on the inside of the boiler. So that's about it. I know I probably missed a few steps or missed a few details, uh, but again, I will probably be covering this uh, in future videos and I'll be replying to comments. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you, Speaking of comments, so today is October 9th. So if you take a look here, this is the, uh, the initial pile of wood uh, that I'm gonna burn through before I start bringing in IBC totes. Um, everything in this pile is just loosely tossed in here. Nothing is stacked. So leave me down in the comments your guess how long you think this pile of wood will last. How many days, what will be the date that I'll need to bring in an IBC tote and all this wood is gone? Leave a guess down in the comments the date that you think all of this wood will be gone. Today is October 9th. Uh, I'll look through the comments once uh, all this wood is gone and see if there was a date that matches and uh, I don't know, we'll do something. We'll see. But anyway, that's gonna do it. We'll let this fire keep burning. We're gonna get her up to 170, it'll all shut off. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Again, I might do like a special live stream where I just take questions on the boiler. Um, all of the, most of the outdoor wood boilers out there uh, pretty much function the same way. They're kind of on a loop, um, you know, circulating the water, and then they have like set points of the water temperature. The fire heats the water, the water transfers the heat into the house, the heat is pulled off the water to heat the house, the water returns to get heated back up by the boiler. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but we are off and burning and now the house is going to be nice and toasty warm and oh, the hot showers, we can take a hot shower for three hours. It's fabulous. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Stay safe, have fun and be cool.